and the total's at 192267, and that ties out to what's on uh, the balance sheet. If I go to the tab to the left, and I go into my expenses, we, can, we could sort the bills now. Once again, I'm gonna close up the hamburger, and we can see the outstanding items here. And then we could, we could uh, pay them. So let's actually go to the pay, pay bills now. So there's multiple ways we can get in there. We have the drop down here, uh, the pay bills. We have this item, so we can go into the pay bills. Uh, we might be able to select, by the way, if I close that out and I go back in here, I'm gonna go into my hamburger expenses. If you were to group, if I wanted to pay these two, for example, and then I go into my pay bills, then yeah, I thought it might check them off. It doesn't check them off, but we still have them within here as well. So notice this is another screen that's basically sorting all of the bills that have been entered that have not yet been paid. So when we look at this pay bills form, this is basically a pay bill data input screen, which will actually create or could create multiple pay bill forms because each one of these that we select are gonna be another bill that we're gonna be paying. So let's let's say that we paid, if we wanna pay these two, for example, then we can choose the method up top. So oftentimes for many people it'd be coming out of the checking account, but we could have the savings account or a credit card type of account that it might be paying uh, through. Let's say the date of payment for us, that we're gonna put it in the future again. So sometime in, uh, after these dates, let's make it the one nine. And then if there are check numbers, then we're gonna enter the check number here and we'll have to actually print the checks. If there are no check numbers, then you might not have the check number. If you needed the check number to be printed uh, or you can say print later, and then we can go into that area where we saw earlier, which was to print, which would be to print the checks. Now to physically print checks, you have to actually buy the checks, physical checks. You can't just print them on a blank piece of paper and put them into the system. But oftentimes people might be doing uh, electronic transfers these days. So you might be using an electronic transfer. When we enter this, what's this going to do? It's going to be decrease in the checking account. That's what a pay bill does. And the other side will specifically not be going to any other account other than accounts payable. The screen means the other side is going to accounts payable. So it's like a check form or it's going to be multiple check forms or expense forms similar, right? But they're going to be, the other side's not going to go to any other account other than accounts payable. Decrease the checking account, the other side goes to accounts payable. So if we did it here, if I said this was a pay bill form, it's basically a check form. What would that do from a journal entry standpoint? We'd say that it's going to be accounts payable going down and the cash is is going down. And these are debits and credits. So if you, if, if, and I'll just use the 120 in our example. So the cash, there's nothing in the cash. So in our case, cash is going negative and the accounts payable, I'm gonna say F2 and then say, well, let's do F2 and accounts, pay accounts payable goes back down. Notice that there was no impact on the income statement, any of these accounts in that second transaction. So no impact, the, the 120 has already been included and now we're just taking accounts payable back down and cash is going down. Although it's a little bit more complex over here because we also have the sub ledger we have to deal with, meaning tracking the sub ledger by vendor. So let's save it and check it, check it. Well, hold on a second. Okay, I have saved it. Let's go ahead and close it now. And let's see what happened. Let's see what happened. K Paso, what happened? Let's go to the balance sheet. Remember to run it to refresh it. And then we're gonna scroll on down and see what happened. We're in the AP, the accounts payable. And we can see here, we entered these bills. Let's make the, what if I scroll down a little bit, make this a little bit wider uh, we entered these bills and then we paid off two of the bills this last one i didn't put a dollar amount in it that's why it was weird i didn't add any dollar amount but in any case th notice how you can tick and tag these off right that's what the accounts payable account will generally look like although it can be quite complex when you have a low, whole lot of transactions 
going in and out of the accounts payable. You can also see that pattern of it ticking and tying off when we go to the, uh, the detail account by vendor running to refresh it. Uh, we can see, well, here we're only showing the outstanding bills in this particular account. We could customize this to see if we can get the, uh, all of the activity of it increasing and decreasing but let's not dive into that right now. Let's first go and see the activity by going to the first tab, open up the hamburger, and then scrolling down to the expenses. And then here, if I close up the hamburger, it was in unpaid, and now those items should have moved over to paid now, right? So now they've moved over to paid, that makes sense. If we go to the expenses tab, note that you could search for this items before we searched for the bills and then the open bills they're no longer in the open bills if i clear that filter then you're going to now that are back here in all bills i could look at the drop down and look at the pay bills form the ones that we paid and there's the pay bills there we can also look at it by vendor and we could sort for the overdue and open items but the ones that we have just paid off, we have the paid in the last 30 days, it should be in there as well. But let's clear the filters and let's look for our vendors. Here we go, so let's just look at vendor five. We could see the activity. So if we talk to the vendor, of course, we can say there's, they're gonna say, did you pay us? We're gonna say, yeah, we entered the bill here and it was paid, the pay bill happened at, at this time, right? Uh, and if it was a if it was a check, then we'd have to see if it cleared or not to see if it cleared the bank feeds. But if it was an electronic transfer, then we could still see if it cleared, but it should clear a lot faster that way. Now, just note when you enter the bill, another way that you might do this, if I if I hit the plus button, if we enter a bill here, you might think, well, what happens with the bank feeds? What if I what if I'm like pay the bill with the bank feeds, and then I just match the the payment uh the payment that comes through the bank uh to the bill form so you could possibly be able to do that it wouldn't be it's not normally the full service bookkeeping system in other words in other words if you're using accounts payable then usually you're going to enter the bill and then pay the bill and use the bank feeds to double check help you with the reconciliation process but you might think it's possible to enter the bill and then you, you might search through here and say, okay, which bills do I need to pay uh, the unpaid bills and pay them with an electronic transfer, right? Pay them electronically and then allow the electronic payment to go through the bank feeds, right? And once it goes through the bank feeds, you'll see them in the bank transactions. So we'll talk more about this later, but you could then go to the transactions. And, and if I went into my checking account, I might see the payment going through here, money going out. And when I see the money going out, I might be able to find a match and see if I can match it up basically to a bill. So you can see the bill forms here are one of the things that you can match it to. And if you were to do that, then you would think QuickBooks would basically enter the transaction of doing the pay bill form. So we'll talk more about that when we get to the, the bank feed area. But again, if you're using accounts payable, then you're probably gonna go through the whole process of bill, pay the bill, and then match the bill to the bank feeds or use the bank reconciliation process. So we'll continue on with more of our journey through the forms and following presentations.